Okay, so we've looked at already how we can push the boundaries of XDS GFX technology in terms of the amount of mass that the system can carry. We've just covered the amount of uh, the velocity at which we can move and the acceleration we can achieve with the new Agile Mover. So our next um, topic is to look at track management system. The 3,000 systems that you heard about earlier that are in existence at the minute are all single track systems. And we need to essentially get around that limitation. But why would we want to do that, Alec? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a great challenge. <laughs> um, and well, yeah, why would you want to switch between tracks? Now, fundamentally, what this means is that we don't have to remove the product from the mover, which is incredibly crucial in some applications. All of this has been, as always, customer driven, hasn't it, Chris? Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, effectively, you can, you can move, transfer a mover from one um, XTS track system to another um, without it actually leaving a single process line. So this means that we could, um, for instance, uh, move the um, take the mover to uh, a rework station, maybe offline inspection, maybe a complete zero maintenance system where you can just swap out movers um, and never have to stop. How about that? Um, that would be incredibly good. Yes. <laughs> so, so there there are lots of applications, but effectively, what you can do is is you you. Removing the need for a separate robot or a pick and play mm -hmm. system to transfer product from one line to another. It's mm -hmm. all done by this incredibly clever track management system. Mm -hmm. um, Chris, so how, how does it actually work? So essentially, you still use the same twin cat technology. We have a second set of function blocks that allow you to identify in a track management system where the mover actually is. Fundamentally, XGS is a collection of, as you were told earlier, servo motor sections that are connected together to make a track. Each one of those is connected by an EtherCAT network, and we define each of those networks as a part in this track management system. And what we can then do is assign those parts to a particular track. So for example, completing a circuit by moving a mover module up and, in, up and down in between the tracks, we can then define that as track one. When the, a second unit is moved in there, we can define that as track two. And all we really do then is essentially tell the mover where it is on each one of those tracks at any particular given moment, um, depending on where the switch is positioned on the system, which is a, a HEPCO creation on the system behind us. Yeah, and, and you know that in itself hasn't been easy because to, to switch from one track to another and you know keep it pretty much mm. seamless, um, we need to be able to shuttle the um, track management mm -hmm. switch system um, within microns effectively. If we're out by you know, more than sort of five microns or so, mm -hmm. it's gonna sound like a nasty old clunky train track. Um, so we use um, a, a clever sort of ball, ball screw driven system um, with a servo motor that's connected to your drives and controls and a linear encoder which allows for thermal compensation as well. So as the temp ambient temperature changes or the, the temperature that the XTS generates, mm. it all compensates for that and means that we get very, very repeatable switching mm. over millions of cycles. And are we limited to a single motor module on those switches or can we go bigger? So yeah, in terms of the, the modules, the, the example we've got behind us is a single motor example switching between just two levels. We can go up to two motor modules mm -hmm. and you could go three, four plus mm -hmm. um, levels in terms of the switch. Now, the only thing to bear in mind is the, the, the longer your travel distance, um, that does slow down the transfer time. But mm -hmm. something like this, you could be looking at switching in 0 0.4 seconds. Mm -hmm. But of course, that would then, if you had multiple switches, allow you to do some sort of accumulation application as well. So it would allow you to gather your parts together off the main track so your main process can continue, but actually hold product in a particular place if it needs to be, say, reworked or if it needs to go back to a previous station, for example. Yeah, so this, this is, again, as Chris said, really sort of pushing the boundaries of XTS GFX um, and is uh, pretty much ready to go in terms of uh, applications.